Hi, my name is Dr. Antonio Webb. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. And these are the commonly used instruments that we use in spine surgery. So I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. If you wanna be a good surgeon, veterinarian, PA, surgical assist, surgical tech, you gotta practice. I'd like to thank the sponsors of this video over at Poly Medical for sending me one of their surgical instrument sets here. This is a fantastic idea, something that you can actually use to practice. Well, this surgical instrument set here has everything that you need to learn how to be a surgeon or practice certain procedures, not only in the operating room, but in the cadaver lab. So thank you to the sponsors over at Poly Medical for sending me one of their surgical instrument sets. There's a link in the description below. As a spine surgeon, I perform a wide variety of different procedures from procedures on the neck, like anterior cervical discectomy infusions or ACDFs, to posterior cervical operations where we go in the back of the neck and make it an incision. Most of these procedures involve a lot of these instruments that we have here at the hospital, and we use these instruments to help us perform the surgery more efficiently and safely. So we're gonna go over some of these instruments that we use in spine surgery. We're gonna start off with suctioning devices. So this is a, what's called a Fraser tip or a suction device that is commonly used in a wide variety of different specialties like general surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, and then spine surgery. We use it in orthopedics as well. Well, what this does, it hooks up to the, the suction device here and we're able to essentially suction the blood. So one of the things that as a surgeon, you have to be able to see what you're doing. And if there's a lot of blood or fluid that is essentially all over the place, well, we need someone to clear that area so we can safely do the surgery. So with this suction device here, it's hooked up to a tubing and this tubing is hooked up to a machine. This will essentially clean out the, the area so you're able to do the surgery and see what you're actually doing. The second thing that we have here, this is a rongeur. So with the rongeur, we are actually able to grab objects in surgery, like bone. Whenever I am taking the pressure off of the spinal canal, taking the pressure off the nerves, there's bone, sometimes there's ligament. And I use a rongeur to actually grab the bone and remove it. This is one of the instruments that we use. Uh, I would say it's one of my favorite instruments, a rongeur. When we are actually dissecting the skin and we're making our incision, we're actually dissecting, which means we're removing or gaining access to the spine. Well, there are some instruments that are needed to hold the soft tissue, the muscle out of the way. One is called a gelpie. It has these little prongs and tooth, teeth on the end. And that this will essentially, you can open it up to retract the soft tissue and retract the muscles. So this is a smaller gelpie, there's larger gelpies as well. Another retractor, either a cerebellar or a Wheatlander. This is a Wheatlander retractor. This is very similar. We use it to retract and hold open the, the uh, soft tissue when we're dissecting, when we actually are trying to gain access to the spine. So they are larger of these self-retractors, they're smaller ones. This is just a, a smaller uh, Wheatlander here. In addition, they have 90 degree Wheatlanders. If you wanted to get the retractor a little bit deeper, you can actually put this 90 degree one in to actually open the soft tissue a little bit more. Usually I'll have one at the proximal aspect of my incision and one at the distal aspect. When we're taking the pressure off of the spinal canal, doing a laminectomy or a hemilaminotomy, which is essentially a procedure to take the pressure off the spine and nerves, well, there are a number of different instruments that we use. One of them is called a Woodson. This is a Woodson retractor here. This is an instrument that I can essentially use to clear away soft tissue when I'm taking off of the, the pressure off the nerve. So essentially this piece of the instrument will go under the bone and under the bone to just make sure there's nothing stuck down. So if there's pressure on the nerve, this instrument, I can clear that pressure before I use another instrument called a kerosene. This is a kerosene rongeur. 
This is an instrument that we use to perform laminectomy procedures or decompression procedures. These procedures are essentially to relieve the pressure. Let's say a patient has a disc herniation or a condition called lumbar stenosis. Well, these instruments here, I have one usually in my left hand and the kerosene rongeur in my right hand, since I'm right-handed, and I can take the pressure off of that, that level of the spine. You can see that this area here closes, open and closes, and it grabs bone, and then I pull it to remove that bone, and then clear it. Grab the bone, clear it. This is how we perform a laminectomy procedure. Another instrument that we commonly use are called nerve hooks. This is a really small nerve hook right here, but once we are taking the pressure off of the nerves, I need to make sure that that nerve is free and there's nothing pressing on the nerve. And this is essentially what I use to make sure that that nerve is free. I run it right on top of the nerve, very gently, and make sure the nerve is free. Another retractor that we use, this is called a Army Navy retractor. Most people would say that the Navy is a small portion, the Army is the long portion. Some people would say the Air Force is right in the middle, down that hole right there. But this is an instrument where we are we're able to pull soft tissue. So if we're trying to retract the muscles or the soft tissue, this instrument here can pull the soft tissue to essentially open it, make more space for the soft tissue. This is a commonly used instrument here in spine surgery and also other specialties as well. One of the, probably anything that's on this table right here, this is something that most specialties use. General surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, ENT. This is a Bovi elect electrocautery. This is a device that can coagulate or stop bleeding, or we can actually use it to cut the skin. Um, it has a cut portion here and then a coagulation portion here. And there's different parameters, like if you wanna set it to 30 millimeters or 40 millimeters, then there will be more kind of the, of the elect electrocautery that is being used. So this is a Bovi electrocautery that we use to essentially stop bleeding. Another very important instrument that we use in spine surgery is called a Cobb elevator. This is an instrument here that we're, we're able to retract the soft tissue. If I am doing my dissection, trying to gain access to the spine, to the fecal or the spinal canal, well, I use this in my hand to essentially retract the soft tissue, and then I use my bovi in my other hand to dissect the tissue and coagulate the tissue. So the bovi is usually in my right hand, the cob is usually in my left hand, um, and this is how I dissect or take the, or gain access to the spine, essentially removing the muscle and any soft tissue that is in the way. Once we are actually down to the spine, there are a couple different things that we can do. If a patient needs a fusion, let's say a lumbar fusion, well sometimes we'll put what's called pedicle screws into the spine. These screws right here are different sizes. There's four millimeters, five millimeter, six millimeter, all the way up to seven, eight millimeter screws. These screws here will essentially go into the pedicle of the spine and essentially hold it in place. And we connect rods to these little, we're called tulips here. These tulips can move. Some of them are actually fixed, but most of them that we use in surgery are actually they can move around and you can see that tulip moving around. So we connect the rod to this portion of the tulip there and then this is what will actually help the spine actually fuse together. So this is a pedicle screw. Most of these are made out of titanium. There are some that are cobalt chrome, but these are the screws that we actually go directly into the bones in the spine called the pedicles to hold it in place. This is a mallet here. This is a instrument that we use, let's say I'm trying to place a spacer or a device inside the, between the bones, I use this mallet to essentially what we call tap or mallet the whatever we're trying to put into the spine. So I use this mallet. You'll commonly hear that sound in surgery to advance or to place instruments or devices into the spine. One of my favorite instruments, I love the sound and I love 
the, the fact that this instrument can actually remove a lot of the bone out of the way so that we can gain access to the spine. It's called a drill or a burr. And this is a high speed drill. This is a high speed burr that can essentially remove bone. If I turn it on using a foot pedal right here, this instrument will essentially remove bone. When using this instrument right here, you have to be very careful because this can actually cut good tissue or cut the skin or cut your finger. So you have to be careful when I'm holding this instrument, I'm holding it like a pencil and then I hit the button on my foot and then this will actually drill away bone, enough bone to actually take the pressure off of the spine. One of my favorite instruments here. When we are doing what's called a discectomy, or actually removing the diseased disc between the bone, there's one instrument that I really like. It's called a David retractor. That's kind of a proprietary name, but this is a instrument that is just like the David. I actually put this into the, the, the disc space and I'm able to retract and take the pressure off of that level and essentially open the area in, in the disc space open. So this is a device that actually goes into the disc space and I squeeze it to essentially make more space. And I usually hold it there for a minute or two just so that that area is kind of opened up, it's loose. And then after I am done, I'm able to put essentially a cage or a spacer. This is a spacer here. This is a 3D printed device or cage, titanium cage, this is pure titanium, that we put on the inside of the disc space to essentially help that area fuse. We commonly put bone graft on the inside of this area right here uh, so that bone can actually grow through this area and it can actually fuse. So this is a spacer, there's peak or plastic, there's titanium spacers, there's cadaver or allograft spacer. So a lot of different types of spacers. This is actually one that we put from a lateral position. You can see the shape of it here. So it goes right in between the bones to actually help that area fuse together. When we're doing a scoliosis case, these are instruments that help us bend the rods. So if a patient has a large scoliosis, their spine is curved or it's rotated, well, we need to put the rods into those pedicle screws and we use these here to essentially bend the rods in the correct configuration. So this is a surgical microscope that we use in surgery. Actually one of my favorite kind of instruments and devices that I use in spine surgery. This will essentially make objects that are really small, like the nerves, big so that we can see them. And you can see them on the monitor here. And I'm looking through the microscope with this, through these eye pieces here and devices. And I'm able to perform the spine surgery through this, by using this microscope. So I can see the instruments and they're very clear. Everything is um, in focus. And I usually have it at eye level. Normally when we're performing spine surgery, especially when not using a microscope, a lot of surgeons can have neck pain from bending their neck down like this for too long. Well, the microscope allows you to look fairly straight ahead and to perform the surgery in a really precise and kind of accurate manner. When I'm using the drill here in surgery, I can essentially hold the drill. You'll see that this is really fast. It, it actually accelerates and spins really fast, and you'll see that it cuts the banana here. One of the fun things about spine surgery is that we're able to wear really cool devices on our head. These are surgical loops that I wear in spine surgery to magnify objects up to 3.5 times their original size. I also wear a headlight, and this headlight will illuminate to make sure that there's enough light when I'm looking in really small spaces, especially near the spine. With the addition of the headlight and my surgical loops, I can perform spine surgery that is very delicate 
and really efficient and safe manners. I hope you enjoyed this video about the commonly used instruments that we use in spine surgery. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.